we're going to win the state of Michigan so easily. We want to do it just like last time. But let's give me a little bit more margin than that, if you don't mind. So we're going to win the state of Michigan, and we are going to win four more years in that very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful house it's called the White House. We made history together four years ago, and tomorrow we're going to make history once again. So this has been really, this was amazing. Grand Rapids, I'll never forget it, though. And, you know, we were called, we were called late in the evening. Rana, thank you very much, wherever you may be. She kept calling, saying, one more trip, one more trip to Michigan. I'm telling you, one more trip. And then we heard Crooked Hillary was coming back because they were hearing. No, you know, Michigan hadn't been won for a long time, many, many years, by a Republican. We heard that Barack Hussein Obama and Hillary and Bill, and Bill was the only one that got it right, said, you don't want to run against Trump. He said that very early. He was the only one. He's the only one that understood what was going on, actually. But they came, and they came, and they wanted to be in Michigan, which was unscheduled. So I got a call from Rana and the whole group, and they said, could you go back? We got here at 12 o'clock in the evening. I started speaking at 12.30, now Election Day. I'll never forget it. We had 32,000 people, almost as many as we have tonight. And, and I said, I said to my team, we have to, this is it. You know, we've done five, but actually six, because we ended up last night around 2 o'clock in the morning in Miami. So we can say that includes on this. So that would be six. We've done six of these big, and everyone was just a lot of people. And you know what? There was a lot of love. There was a lot of love. There was a lot of love. We had 45,000 people in Florida last night. By the way, we're doing very well in Florida. We're doing very, very well in Wisconsin. We're doing very well in Texas. I hear great things about Texas. You know, they're saying Texas may be even well. You know, then you think, Sleepy Joe Biden's against guns. That's not good for Texas, right? He's against oil. Oil isn't good. If you're against oil, I don't think it's good. That's not good politics, right, Texas? And he's against God. Right? So, you know, when you have guns, oil, and God, and he's doing well in Texas, I don't think so. But I actually know for a fact we're doing very well in Texas. I think we're doing very well all over. I think you're going to have I don't know if it's as much of a surprise. I don't know what's a surprise. We fulfilled everything we said we were going to fulfill, and that's why people are here. And we did some things that we never even talked about, right? We never talked about Space Force. We got in, and I said, you know what? I looked at Russia. I looked at China. I said, we need Space Force. And we did it first time in 74 years, not since the Air Force. But I want to thank you all. You know, we have a great group of people here. I'd like to show our appreciation for our phenomenal Vice President, Mike Pence, and his amazing wife, Karen. Did he make a good speech? I saw him on the plane, and I couldn't sort of. Did he make a good speech? Uh, that's, he's great, I'll tell you what. I, I, it was close. It was close. If I had my choice between Mike and Kamala, I think it's a very close choice, but I think I'll take it. I think we'll take that. I think we'll stick with Mike and Karen. No. By the way, how badly did he beat her in that debate? Did you ever hear the expression, if that were a fight, they would have stopped it? But anyway, no, Mike's been great from day one, and I appreciate it. I also want to thank Don Jr., Eric, Ivanka, Tiffany. Words cannot express how proud you make me every single day. No matter what happens tomorrow, I'm very proud of you all. But if we don't win, I'll never speak to them again. <laughs> they like him. They like them all. No, no, I'm very, I'm very proud. 
We're very proud of you. Thank you. Look at these people. There's a lot of spirit here. Now, it's, it's funny, though. I kept saying we have to finish off here. That we have to do it. It's just that we can be a little bit superstitious, right? But you people, you've been great. You've been great. And I think we're going to have a tremendous victory in Michigan. Don't forget, four years ago, we said I said, why are so many car companies leaving? You know, you were losing everything to Mexico and to China and to, frankly, Canada, and you were losing everything. And we stopped it. And now you have many, many car plants that have already been built, are being built, renovation 17. You didn't have a deal in like 42 years or so. It was always going out. Now they're all coming in. I want to thank Prime Minister Abe of Japan. I said, Shinzo, Shinzo, you got to do me a favor, Shinzo. We got to, you got to build some plants. And he said, no, 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 we are the government. We don't do that. That's up to the private sector. I said, no, Shinzo, you got to do it. You got to do it. It's not fair. You're sending too many cars and they're built in Japan. We wanted them built in Michigan. We want them built in Ohio. We want them built in South Carolina, North Carolina. We got to do it. He says, but I do not do that, Donald. And the next day, they announced five companies are coming to Michigan. So, but he's a great guy. And he retired. He wasn't, uh, you know, had some difficulty with, with his health. But he was a great uh, prime minister of Japan. And he did a great favor to Michigan and to us, to all of us. He's a, we have a lot of, we have a lot of activity in Michigan. It would be nice if your governor would open up the state, however. You want to open up the state. Open up your schools, open up the state, go back, get back to business. The only one that's allowed to roam free is her husband. What's her husband like? Remember, that wasn't so long ago. He's allowed to do whatever he wants, but everybody else, you're not allowed to leave your house or your apartment. No, she's got to open it up. Well, they will. On November 4th, she'll announce, okay, now we're going to open. You know, they're doing that for political reasons. They think it hurts us in the election. Actually, it helps us, okay? Who has voted so far? Has anyone voted? Okay, good. Because you're saving it, right? You're saving it for Tuesday, right? No, we do. We're going to have a red wave. They call it the Great red wave like nobody's ever seen before, like nobody's ever seen. So based on just, you know, early results, though, Florida looks like it's phenomenal, just phenomenal. North Carolina is looking great. They're all looking — I think they're all looking great. Ohio is looking fantastic. You know, we won Ohio last time by eight points, and uh, I said, well, why are — you know, these, these fake polls that they put out, they're called suppression polls. If they make them bad enough, they hope you don't want to waste your time and vote, right? We love our president, but if he's losing by 250 points, let's stay home and have dinner, darling. And uh, it doesn't work because you people don't — you don't go for the bait, do you? It's really — it's really amazing. And uh, I think we're winning — I think we're going to win everything. I think tomorrow is going to be one of the greatest wins in the history of politics. I want to give the very special thank you also to Jared Kushner, who is in the process of negotiating a little thing called Peace in the Middle East. Great guy. Great guy. They like that. They like the sound. Peace in the Middle East without blood all over the sand. No blood in the sand and no cost, just peace. Already three countries, UAE, a great leader, Mohammed, great leader. And uh, just, you know, three countries have already signed. Bahrain, it's already signed. Sudan. And we have many, many countries. How many do we have lined up? Like, it'll be more than 10. Uh, now, what would happen if sleepy Joe Biden had to take over the deal? You know what happens? That's the end of that deal. You can forget that deal, the sleepy, the sleepy one. Lara Trump, thank you, Lara. What a job you do. What a job you do. 
You know, Lara's a specialist on a place called North Carolina, I will tell you. She lived there, and she grew up there, and they love her there. And Pennsylvania, that extends to Pennsylvania next door. And you said that we're doing phenomenally there, right? So I think that's right. She said win. I think, it, I think they're both wins, big wins. We've got to be careful, though, because the Pennsylvania deal with that decision, oh, you can count the ballots later on and count them whenever you'd like. No, no, we have to be very, very careful with that. That causes a lot of problems. I want to thank Kimberly Guilfoyle. Kimberly is fantastic from day one. I'd watch her on the five, and she always liked me right from the beginning, so I always liked her. If they don't like me, I never like them. It's funny the way that works. But she was their big star, and she did great. And thank you very much, Kimberly. I appreciate it very much. And Tiffany, thank you for the job you do. She goes around from place to place. She just graduated from law school. She just graduated from Georgetown. She did a great job. Thank you, honey. Thank you very much. Great job. And Michael, thank you very much. Thank you very much. To all of our supporters here tonight, I really want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We've uh, worked very hard in four years. We've been hit by fake fake investigations, fake scandals, fake impeachments. We've had — we've had so many things that uh, — the witch hunt, I call it the witch hunt. And it turned out to be a phony witch hunt, and they should have known it the first day. They did know it the first day, but it's the deep state. It's whatever you want to call it. But, you know, it should have never happened. Think of it. They spied on our campaign. They got caught. They tried to take down a duly elected President of the United States. They got caught. And you know who knew all about it? Barack Hussein Obama and sleepy Joe Biden. They knew all about it. They knew all about it. And then I watched the fake news back there. Look at all of them. Look at all of the fake news. It's, not, it's a lot of fake news. Then I watched the fake news saying, you know, his attitude is a very tough attitude. He's not very nice. He's a very nasty person. No, no. We're defending ourselves. We're defending all of these people that voted for us with these fake. And then what happens? It turns out to be that it was them that were guilty of all of these horrible crimes, including the crime of treason. Because when you try and take down a duly elected president, you know, it's called treason. It's called big stuff. It's big stuff. So we're going to see how that all works out. We're going to see how that. But that's another reason we want to go for a long time, frankly, because you know what? We started something incredible. We built the greatest economy in the history of the world. We then had to close it down for a period of time. We saved millions of lives. Remember, the original estimate was 2.2 million people would die from the China plague, and they could have kept it in China. They didn't get infected in the rest of China after Wuhan province, but it came out to the world. It came out to Europe and the United States and 188 countries all over the world. And we can never forget that. And we signed a great trade deal with China, but it doesn't mean so much. The ink wasn't dry, and all of a sudden this happened. And but the job we've done, when you see the numbers, and you're going to hear the numbers because they're coming out very soon, the job we've done has been an incredible job. We had to close it up. We saved millions of lives. We now opened it up. You saw what happened. 33.1 percent, the fastest in the history of our country. The fastest growth, the biggest growth in the history of our country. But you've been there right from the beginning. We've all been together. And I'll tell you what, we very much appreciate it. And think of how it could have been different, except I think, we, in a way, we would have been less popular. Somebody said, because they would have said, just another presidency. This time, you know we had a fight for you. We had a fight. You understood it. You understood the hoax better than anybody. It was a hoax, the Russian hoax. And after spending $48 million, 18 angry Democrats and smart people, vicious — they were vicious, they were smart — if they could find any little morsel, and they went over taxes. 
and they went over everything you can go over. They spent $48 million, two and a half years, the Mueller investigation scam, and they come up, no collusion, there's no collusion after all of that, which makes me perhaps the most innocent man anywhere in the history of the United States. Now, a friend of mine called me up, very smart guy. He said, I can't imagine anybody could go through two and a half years, $48 million, 18 killers, some of whom worked for Hillary Clinton, right? Crooked Hillary. And it turned out they're the ones dealing with Russia. What a disgrace. So let's see what happens. It's too bad it's going so slowly. There's plenty of info there, and I try and stay uninvolved. Someday I'm going to have to get involved, maybe. I try and stay uninvolved, going too slowly. No, sir, we'd rather not do anything before the election. Well, they did it to me before. They did during, before, and after. These are bad people. Comey, the worst director in the history of the FBI, a crooked, a crooked person. Did you leak, remember, Chuck Grassley? Did you leak? The information to the newspapers. Uh, uh, he choked when he heard Chuck Grassley from Iowa. Great gentleman, great gentleman. He looked at that guy. He said, did you leak? And he said, yes, he choked. You know, the guy choked like a dog, Comey. He leaked, he lied. He did a lot of things. You saw the report by Inspector General Horowitz, who, by the way, did a great report. That was a great report, Inspector General Horowitz, and I appreciate it. But you saw that on Comey. Comey should hang his head in disgrace. But we had to go through all this stuff. Think if we didn't have any of it. We probably wouldn't have done as well. You know, it's true. We might not have done as well. And we might not have these massive crowds because you saw what was happening. You got it. We might not have had. So I just want to tell you, we appreciate you so much. We really do. We appreciate you so much. And now we have to build on what we've done. Nobody has done what we've done. No administration has done. Thank you. Wow, I love you, too. I love you, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really nice. You know, in the history of politics, nobody's ever heard that expression before. It's true. Look, Ronald Reagan, we like Ronald Reagan, right? But nobody ever said, we love you, we love you. Nobody's ever heard it before. Huh? Nobody's ever heard it before. It's an expression, true. You know, they were covering it the other night. They're looking back, oh, they want to find it so badly. They want to find somebody so badly. But it's never been said before, to the best of anyone's knowledge, and we appreciate it. I'll tell you what, when you hear that, I had a nice life. I had the greatest life. But you know what? I'm so happy. This was the greatest decision I ever made because we have done so much good together. We've done it together. We couldn't have done it without you. And we've done so much from the biggest tax cuts in history to regulation cuts, the biggest ever. We have cut regulations at a level that nobody believed. It would take 18 to 20 years to get a highway approved. We have it down to two. It'll soon be down to one. And it may not get approved. It may be an environmental problem. It may be a safety problem. But it shouldn't take 20 years. It shouldn't take 19 years, one in 21 years. And by the time you get it approved, it's, first of all, you start off as a young man on a highway project, and you end up in retirement, and then you get a rejection. We rejected three to two, some board somewhere. No, we've done a great job, and uh, we've rebuilt our military. We just got a 91 percent approval from our veterans. The veterans just gave us a 91 percent approval, highest we've ever got. With your vote, we will continue to cut your taxes, cut regulations, support our police, support our great military, protect your Second Amendment, which is gone if Sleepy Joe Biden gets. Defend religious liberty and ensure more products are proudly made with that beautiful, beautiful phrase, right? Made in the USA. Next year, we will be, and I mean this, I think we're, we have such a foundation. <laughs> this group over here, they're, a, they're an activist group. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, fellas. USA! 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 This is, this is a great group. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. So you had the — last year was the best year you ever had. Before that was the best year. You had three of them with me, and then we got hit with the uh, the plague, and then we went back to work. Under my leadership, our economy is now growing at the fastest rate ever recorded, 33.1 percent last week. And if you look at the auto business, auto business, I don't know what's going on. It's, it's at a level that it's never been at. What is that all about? What is that all about? You wouldn't think. And this is during a pandemic. We're rounding the turn, by the way. We're ra they hate it when I say it, but we're rounding the turn. You know, they used to say, look at the way Europe's doing. Well, take a look at Europe. Take a look. And what we've done in terms of the economy, we went down less than any major country in the world or any country. And now we've gone up far faster and far higher than any country in the world that's not even close. And it should be tougher because of the size, because we're a big country. We created a record 11.4 million jobs in the last five months alone, which is another record. That's another big record. We've never hired that many people that fast. While foreign nations are in a free fall, we're creating an economic powerhouse unrivaled anywhere in the world. A recent Gallup poll found that 56 percent of Americans say they are better off today than they were four years ago under Obama and Biden. And if Biden and Kamala — you don't have to say it — Kamala, Kamala. If Biden and Kamala Harris, who's further left by far than crazy Bernie Sanders, right? He's considered a strict conservative compared to her. How the hell did he ever pick her, Mike? Where's Mike? How did that ever happen? That turned out — I don't think that's going to be a good pick. You're going to find out tomorrow. By the way, she happens to be slightly against fracking. She's still against fracking, you know? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Biden goes like, I'm against for a year and a half. You know, he's running, running. Nobody gave him a chance because he never got more than 1 percent in prime time, right? 25 years ago, the guy never got 1 percent. And, you know, he never had what it took. He was a glad hander. Not a smart guy, not a nice guy either. By the way, not a nice guy. But he was well, — I used to call him 1 percent Joe because he ran for president all the time, and he never got more than 1 percent. Now he's got half the intelligence he had 20 years ago, and he wins. Politics is a strange business, isn't it? Strange, very strange business. But if Biden and Harris and the radical left gain power, they will collapse our economy and send our nation into a very steep depression. That's what's going to happen. This is the only man that I've ever seen run for office on the fact that he wants to give you the largest tax increase in the history of our country. No, that's his — that's his speech. He doesn't — the good news is he has no idea what the hell he's saying, so it doesn't. He goes up. Here's his line. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to give you the biggest tax increase, increase in the history of our country. It will be $4 trillion. They're going to increase your taxes by $4 trillion. $4 trillion tax increase. That's his campaign. We're going to, and they're going to put the money in the Green New Deal, which is conceived and dedicated, designated by AOC plus three, right? AOC plus three. This was their deal. I don't think they ever took an environmental course. Did they go to college, by the way? Did — I don't think they ever took a course on the environment. But Biden wants to raise your taxes $4 trillion, massively increase regulations. You know, the regulations may have been more important than even the big tax cuts that you got, the biggest ever. You got the biggest tax cuts ever, and you know it. You know it. You felt that in a very — very good place. You know where it is? Your wallet. You felt it in your wallet. They want to close down your factories, send your jobs overseas, destroy the suburbs. Women of the suburbs, please. 
Okay. Please. I wiped out a regulation that would have destroyed your home, to put it mildly. It would have destroyed your American dream. And Ben Carson is a great guy. I said, sir, why don't we just do this? Why don't we just sort of ease it up? It's a horrible regulation. What it does is a horrible thing, and everybody knows it. It would have destroyed the suburbs. I said, Ben, let's just cut it out. Let's terminate it, because there's no negotiating here. Let's just terminate it. And I terminated it. And you know one thing I know about the women of the suburbs? They want two things. They want their home, they want their family life, but they want safety, and they want security. And that's what we provide. And I think this will be like four years ago. Remember, Donald Trump will do very poorly with women at the end of the evening when they're all crying. You know, remember they were crying? Remember? Martha Raddatz, oh, she's very impartial. She was another one of my debate anchors. I had some real beauties, didn't I? She was, no, she was crying, and they all said, we're going to do badly with women. I'm going to do terribly with women. I, I said, why? What's so bad? Tell me what's so bad. And at the end of the evening, he's done very well with women. What happened? No. But this time, we're going to do even better, because we are providing safety and security. And we — and for the suburban women, I mean, we're, we're saving the suburbs. This regulation was so horrible. What it does to the suburbs, it would have destroyed the suburbs as we knew them. And, you know, I just want to — I got to say this. 31 percent of the people living and moving to the suburbs are minority groups — African-American, Asian-American, Hispanic-American. And they have a great American dream also. And they want to live in the suburbs, and they want to be proud. And they don't want to live next to a project that somebody puts in because they play games with your zoning and other things. And all I can say is, for the women — I don't even talk about the men in the suburbs. I don't care about the men in the suburbs. I only care. Because they're all saying — he's going, no, what about us? I don't worry about you. But the women of the suburbs are going to vote for President Trump because we love you. And we're saving you a horrible — a horrible thing was going to happen, frankly. And it's been happening for years, and it's been a very bad situation. So we solved it. We terminated it. It's gone. Now, if they get in, if they should get in, uh, you can take that regulation and quadruple it, just like they want to quadruple your taxes. You can quadruple it. So I think that'll be good. I think we're going to have a great woman. That's a pretty hard pitch, but that's the way it is, right? They want to dissolve your borders. You know, we complete the wall in a very short period of time. We're over 400 miles. Over 400 miles. And that's right, Mexico is paying for the wall. You know, they like to say Mexico's. But we, we will have the wall completed very shortly. We're over 400 miles right now, 400 miles. And we're building 10 miles a week. And we now have the strongest numbers and the strongest border, southern border, that we've ever had. And you know what? We want people to come into our country, but they have to come in legally, and they have to come in through merit. We want people that can help us. We want people that can help us. They want to terminate religious liberty, outlaw private health care. 400 — think of this. Think of this. Private health care. You work so hard. You have 180 million people that have a great health care plan that love it, private plans, and they want to end it and put you on socialized medicine. I don't think so. I don't think you'll be — I don't think you're going to be too happy. I don't think you — we have a cold. Let's go to the hospital and let's wait for nine days to see a doctor. They want to confiscate your guns, Second Amendment and indoctrinate your children with hateful, anti-American lies. So you'll be happy that I just signed on the plane this beautiful Air Force One, and it is a beauty, I have to admit, an executive order to teach our nation's students pro-American values that will be taught. Sleepy Joe Biden has vowed to abolish and eradicate the American oil and natural gas industries, and he's pledged to ban fracking. And you saw that for a year, more than that. He'd get on stage with all these crazy people, radical left people, 
and they were screaming, who could ban it faster? He would say, yes, I ban fracking. I am totally against fracking. For a year, I am against fracking. I could play 100 clips. See the board? Where is the board? I spent a lot of money for that today. I could, he's going, for a year, I am against fracking. Then he lucks out because Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren doesn't get out. So she takes enough votes, she takes votes away from Crazy Bernie, right? On Super Tuesday. And he loses by a little bit on each state, and Bernie loses again. This poor guy, Crazy Bernie. But he's running again in four years, don't worry about it. No, he's the best loser I've ever seen. He, he could lose, he lost with Hillary, and didn't, they didn't treat him too well, and then he lost. But Elizabeth Warren lost it. If she would have gotten out, he would have had the votes. He would have won easily. So instead of uh, Crazy Bernie, I voted, I'm running against a sleepy guy, right? I'm running against a very sleepy guy. We can't let the sleepy guy fool us, though, because he happens to be a corrupt politician, and they don't want to ride it. Biden's energy plan will send every state into a crushing Poverty situation from Michigan to Minnesota. We're going to win Minnesota because of Omar and because we did a great job in stopping the riots in Minneapolis. The National Guard went in. They should have called them a lot sooner, like a week and a half. You wouldn't have had half your city burnt down. But Arizona, Pennsylvania, we're doing great in Pennsylvania, by the way. I just got the word. I just got the word. We're doing great in Pennsylvania. It's looking good. It's actually, I think you're going to have a very exciting, you're going to have a very exciting evening or day tomorrow, but evening in particular tomorrow. You know, when people see it, I walk in, we do polls, and they do a poll. We interviewed 73 people, and President Trump is down 57 points. This is a poll. See, this is a poll. When you draw crowds like this, this is not the crowd of somebody that's going to lose the state of Michigan. This is not, this is not, hey, look at this crowd. You can't even see the end of it. You can't even, this is not the crowd of a second place finisher. Do you agree with that? No, no, no. This is our crowd all together. We're in this together and we're doing it together. As long as I'm president, we'll remain, we will remain the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere on this planet. And for the first time, we are energy independent. You never heard that term before. We're energy independent. And you know, we have very good relationships in different parts of the world, and some we help. We don't have to, though. Now we don't have to do. We do what we want. But we have some very good allies and partners that will help them. But we don't need their oil anymore. We have so much oil. We have more oil than anybody, okay? And it's uh, an incredible thing that have, it's happened over the last few years, a lot of great things. And you're paying, what, $2 a gallon for your gasoline? That's okay. You know what that's like? That's like a tax cut. That's bigger than a tax cut. If Biden got in, you'd be paying $7, $8, $9. Didn't they say, get rid of your car? We're going to build some more windmills, kill all the birds. Joe Biden is a globalist who spent 47 years outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless foreign wars in countries that most of you have never even heard of, okay? A vote for Biden is a vote to eradicate your auto industry. Somehow, I don't think you want to do that in your particular state. He was a cheerleader for NAFTA, one of the worst trade deals ever made. And now we have USMCA, which is a great deal. What a difference. No, you were sending all your jobs. You know, 12 years ago, I was honored, believe it or not, the man of the year. I was never thinking about doing this. The man of the year in Michigan. I'm still trying to figure out how that happened. But and I got up and I said, you know, you're losing all your car business to Mexico and Canada, too, by the way. And what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And it was a whole big thing. It became quite controversial, as usual, but I was right. And it was probably the biggest reason that I ultimately ran for the presidency, because I saw how we were being ripped off, not only the auto business, how we were being ripped off by every country of the world, friend and foe, 
on trade. And it just was something that was terrible. Now with the USMCA, they said there's no way I'd ever pull it off. There's no way you get rid of NAFTA. You know why? Because Mexico and Canada loved it. I said, well, if they love it, that means it can't be any good, right? They said, ah, we never thought of that one. So I wouldn't say they're exactly thrilled with USMCA, but we're fine with it. We like it. But he was sending your auto jobs, so many of them, to Mexico, and it was uh, terrible. Uh, Joe Biden supported China's entry into the World Trade Organization, which was the beginning of a disaster. It was good for China, but it was sure as hell bad for us. But, you know, we won $7.5 billion a little while ago because we wouldn't win anything. They had no respect for this country whatsoever. And now they know that if they don't treat us right, we'll pull out of that deal so fast. Now, all of a sudden, we're winning all these cases, but we just won $7.5 billion, which would have been impossible with a different president. You are so lucky I've agreed to be your president. Go out and vote for Trump. So Seven and a half billion dollars we won. That was nice. Michigan lost half of all of its auto manufacturing jobs because that was like a Biden and his friends. That was a betrayal to you and to many other states. He supported the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which would have eliminated your auto industry totally. I came in and immediately canceled it. I canceled it. I was so happy to cancel the TPP. I ended the NAFTA disaster, canceled that one, too. I've been an activist. Despite the fact that every week I'm being hit on all different sides, let's impeach him for having a perfect conversation with the president of Ukraine. They were the ones that had the bad conversations, That's including his son making $183,000 a month to sit on the board of a company. His son, where's Hunter? Where's Hunter? His first name is Ware. Where's Hunter? Remember that? I brought that up. A T-shirt was made overnight. It was the hottest-selling T-shirt of the year. Where's Hunter? You know where Hunter is? He's buying vacuum cleaners because he follows his father and he takes — he vacuums in money from every country that his father sees. No, seriously, Ukraine. His father was in charge of Russia, Ukraine, and China. President Obama entrusted him with those three countries. Those are three beauties, right? Russia, Ukraine. So Russia, Moscow, the mayor of Moscow's wife gives him three and a half million dollars. Hunter. Now he got, you know, dismissed from the military, was unemployed. His father becomes vice president. And now all of a sudden he's raking in money like you never saw. Now you tell me, is that honest? And then they say, the big guy gets 10 percent. The big guy, in some cases, gets 50 percent. And then the last one is they ask China for $10 million a year. This is — this is Biden. They asked for $10 million a year — $10 million for introductory purposes. That's what — introductory purposes. So in other words, he's going to introduce people to who? To his father, for which he gets $10 million a year. I never saw anything like this. And the fake news refuses to report it because they don't want it in there, because it's not good for them. But how about the Moscow? Three and a half million dollars from the wife of the mayor of Moscow. Three and a half million dollars to Where's Hunter? You know where Where's Hunter? He's at the bank depositing his money. <laughs> now think of it. So he gets a billion and a half from China. He goes with his father on Air Force Two, a plane that the great Vice President Mike Pence uses to. Mike, do your kids follow you to the various countries raking in money now? He's got the greatest people, the greatest children, the greatest family. I don't think they have, right, where they're flying airplanes for our military. No, they don't. They do it a little differently. They do it the old-fashioned way. Now, Mike Pence, it's a whole different — I always compare. I say, can you imagine with Mike Pence how good we have it with Mike Pence compared to that? No, it's uh, great. Now, how about the China, though? So the kid has no investment experience whatsoever. His father and him, they go into Air Force Two. In 10 minutes, like a 10-minute meeting, he walks out with a billion and a half dollars from China. They don't do this for the biggest investment firms. I spoke to a friend of mine. He's one of the biggest guys on Wall Street. He said, no, this is never done. They invest their own money. They don't need 
people that are much dumber than them to invest their money. They invest their own money. They don't do that. They said, wow, that's amazing. How long did it take them to get the money? About 10 minutes. Walks out with a billion and a half dollars to invest, which is millions of dollars a year. And the fake news and big tech, you know, big tech is getting very dangerous. Very dangerous. But it's one of the reasons we have to win. They have me trending every day on Twitter, trending. They make up these stories, phony stories. They put up stories. Or they'll take an old story, make it as bad. Number one trend, like some really boring story. You know, trending is like, got to be cool, right, to trend? I'm trending number one, number two, number three. Everyone negative, negative, negative. How the hell did I ever win this thing? It's such a fix with these people. I'm always trending with these stories that are like, Either they didn't happen or they make them different. And it's not, I don't want to act like a complainer, but it's a totally rigged deal. And everyone said four years ago, they said, sir, you can't win. Why? Because big tech is against you. I said, what's big tech? I didn't even know what the hell it was, right? I learned fast because I think we're number one in the world now on social. So we learned very well. We got a lot of people. You know what? If I didn't have, they say, don't tweet. Forget tweet. It's called social media. If we didn't have social media, I'd have no voice. We wouldn't be here. I have no choice. They say, gee, we wish he wouldn't do so much tweeting. I, I don't do tweeting. What I do is social media, and without it, I don't think we'd be here because we'd have no voice. There's no voice with these people. They're dishonest people, mostly. Not in all cases. But Joe Biden is a corrupt politician who, what he's done is uh, he's bled America dry. In 2016, Michigan voted to fire this corrupt political establishment, and you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. And if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because, thank you, I'm not a politician, thank you. If I don't always play by the rules of Washington and the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you, and I fight for you harder than anyone has ever fought for you before. Joe Biden is bought and paid for by big tech, big media, and powerful special interests. That's why he takes in $300 million. They take in millions and millions of dollars for his crazy campaign. And he's not going to win. I really don't believe he's going to win. Because of this, take a look. This is going on all over the country. They have tractors, thousands of tractors. You ever see this? Thousands in Iowa. They have thousands. We're winning in Iowa, very big, by the way, just in case. Thousands of tractors in Iowa on big farms, thousands and thousands. They have thousands of boats, 6,000 boats out in the lake, out in the ocean. They have things nobody's ever seen anything like it. So I think we're going to have a very big day. But they say you can't win without big tech. Well, we're going to find out tomorrow. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But they said the same thing. They said the same thing four years ago. I said, I thought, uh, you know, the head of CNN said, you can't win without CNN. I said, really? And we won. So now we have to do it again. They're totally crooked. They're fake news. CNN is fake. CNN and the others are fake news. They own Biden. They control him, and they know that he will always do their bidding. Every corrupt force in American life that betrayed you and hurt you is supporting Joe Biden. The failed establishment that started the disastrous foreign wars that hurt our country so badly and hurt our young people so badly. They support sleepy Joe Biden. The career politicians that offshored your industries and decimated your factories and sent your jobs away, they support Biden. The open border lobbyists that killed our fellow citizens with illegal drugs and gangs and crime, they support Biden. The far left Democrats that ruined our public schools, depleted our inner cities, defunded our police, and demeaned your sacred faith and values, they support Biden. The anti American radicals defaming our noble history, heritage, and heroes, they support. Sleepy Joe Biden, Antifa, and the rioters, looters, Marxists, and left-wing extremists, they all support Biden. This election comes down to a very simple choice. Do you want to be ruled by the corrupt and selfless 
political maniacs that you're dealing with? Or do you want to be ruled by the American people? You're supposed to be ruled by the American people. Do you want to be represented by a career politician who hates you by an outsider? I mean, just take a look. These people, what they do and what they get away with, and I guess that's the other reason. I mean, I was in politics, and I see what what's been happening to our country. Our country was going to hell, and we've turned it. And we got, we got waylaid by this plague that came in, but we've done a job like nobody else has ever done a job, and you understand it. And that's why there's so many of you here tonight, and that's why all over the country this is happening, all over the country. And even they're just springing up by themselves. I'm not there. I don't do this. I mean, it's you look, they had something today I read where 100 miles of cars all with the flag, the American flag, the Trump, the whole Trump thing. But you want to be represented by a career politician who actually doesn't like you or by an outsider who will defend you like you have never been defended before. That's what I'm doing. And it's not easy. But there's nothing I've ever enjoyed more in my life because we are making so much progress. We have to now finish the progress. A vote for Biden is a vote to hand the keys of government over to people who don't like you, don't respect you, and who want to rob your children of their American dream. We have a great American dream. We're not going to let it happen. We're not going to let that happen. We're going to keep our great American dream. A vote for Biden is a vote to give control of government over to the globalists and communists and socialists and wealthy, liberal, hypocrites, and all of those that want to silence, censor, cancel, and punish you. If you want your children to be safe, if you want your values to be honored, if you want your life to be treated with dignity and respect, then I am asking you to go to the poll tomorrow and vote, vote, vote. Remember what I said four years ago, I am your voice, and we will make America great again, and that's what we're doing. For the last four years, the depraved swamp has tried everything to stop me and to stop you because they know I don't answer to them, I answer to you. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Together, we will defeat the corrupt establishment, we will dethrone the failed political class, and we will drain the Washington swamp, and we will save that American dream, that beautiful, beautiful American dream. This election is a choice between a deadly Biden lockdown, open up your state, Governor, or a safe vaccine that ends the pandemic and leads to the greatest economy in the history of the world. That's where we're going. We were there, and we're going to get it back very quickly. And that's going to bring our whole country together, because success brings it together. And it was happening. Before that plague came in, it was happening. People were calling me that you would least suspect, and it was all happening. And then we had to close it down and now build it up. And it's building — it's not a V. It's a super V. It's a super V. We will mass distribute the vaccine in just a few short weeks. It will quickly eradicate the virus and wipe out the China plague once and for all. And whether we have the vaccine, great companies, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Pfizer, but with or without it, we are rounding the turn. Just remember that. You know, they don't like it. They hate it when I say that. We're rounding the turn. And they always use Europe. Oh, look at Europe, look at Europe. Well, take a look at Europe. Look at how they're doing. And, their economy is in tatters, and they have a lot of problems. And we don't want that. We don't want that. And that should have never happened. It should have never happened. That should have never been allowed to happen. Joe Biden is promising to delay the vaccine and turn America into a prison state. Looking — he's looking you in the face, and he's locking you in your home while letting rioters, Antifa, the radical left, run down your streets, riot in your streets, burn down your stores, beat you over the head, and they're allowed to do that. But you can't go to your church. You can't have dinner with your family. But you're allowed to protest and riot. That's why I call all of these protests 
because we're allowed to protest. You're not allowed to meet, and you're not allowed to pray together, but you're allowed to protest. So I call everything that we do a protest. The Biden lockdown will mean no school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgivings, no Easter's, no Christmas, no Fourth of July, no future for the youth. Other than that, it's actually quite good. A vote for Sleepy Joe Biden is a vote for lockdowns, layoffs, and misery. If you want a vaccine to kill the virus, by the way, he would have been so far behind on a vaccine. He would have been so far behind. He did the swine flu. It was the joke of why he, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Now he's saying he should have acted faster, except when I did the ban on China, he said I shouldn't do it for two and a half months. Then he admitted he was wrong to it. And then he runs, and now he's saying I should have acted. I was so early in doing that ban, and we saved. And our biggest critic admits that we saved thousands and thousands of lives by doing it. Thousands of lives. And the ventilators that we made, and all of the things that we've done, and the — all of the uh, medicines that are coming out. And here I am, right? Here I am. Now, I'm sure it had nothing to do with the medicine. I used to sort of give the medicine a little bit of credit. Now I give it done, because I'm a perfect physical specimen, and I'm a very — I'm a very young person. I'm a very young person. I said that, you know, of course, a little bit sarcastically. I said it a couple of weeks ago. I said, no, no, I'm better perfect. I mean, it was very quick, very easy, because I'm in perfect physical shape, and I'm a very young man. And CNN went crazy. He is not in great shape, and he is not a young man. They went totally crazy. They are definitely, seriously losers. Could you imagine if they had to cover Sleepy Joe for four years? Their ratings would take. You know, they have the highest — all these — that's why football is not doing well. First of all, they're not going to do well. Basketball was down 71 percent, right, their finals. You know why? Because our people want to see people that respect our country, respect our anthem, and respect our flag. And football's way down. But, you know, they're down for that reason. But they're also down because people would rather watch this stuff than watch football, because this is much tougher. They consider this to be much tougher, actually. But can you imagine if they covered Sleepy Joe? The ratings are phenomenal for all these things. And then they cover Sleepy Joe. Their ratings would tank. They would come to see me. Sir, I think it's really important that you run again. You're going to — because we are losing our networks. Our ratings are down the tubes. The failing New York Times will definitely be out of business very quickly. They used to write nothing about me. Now I average probably about four or five stories a day on the front page. Someday they're going to give me a good one. Watch. It might be tomorrow. We got to have a big win. We want a big win, not just a win. We want a big win. We want a big one. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates said about Biden that he was wrong on nearly every single major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. He's been wrong on everything. He's been wrong on everything. But don't believe me. Because you're Michigan, I spent all of this money on these beautiful, very large television sets. I call them beautiful large screens. They're large television sets. Let's see it for yourself, okay? Go ahead. Joe Biden! Joe Biden! <laughs> Joe Biden! Have you taken a cognitive No, I haven't taken a test. Why the hell would I take a test? Come on, man. That's like saying you, before you got in this program, you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not. What do you think, huh? Are, are you a junkie? You... By the way, this is my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this is the... Oh, you switched on me. This is my wife. This is my sister. They switched on me. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. There is not a single solitary reason in the world why. Why, as I said, we shouldn't be in a position that everybody — and that's my wife, Jill. Hey, Jill. I'm Jill's husband, actually. And Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. 
And I did, and back in those days, you show how things have changed. Play the radio, make sure the television, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night, the, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear words. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by, go, you know the, you know the thing. Because if you could take care, if you were a quartermaster, you can sure and help take care of running a, you know, a department store uh, thing, you know, we're in the second floor of the ladies' department, or whatever, you know what I mean? Well, I'm sick and tired of smart guys. <laughs> you know, the rapidly rising uh, um, uh, in with, uh, with, uh, I don't know. Uh, there been no caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lion, dog-faced pony soldier. Why, why attack Sanders? Why, 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 why? You're getting nervous, man. What kind of country are we going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he is uh, going to find ourselves in a position where if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be in a different world. After lie, after lie, after lie, after lie. You know, we have to come together. That's why I'm running. I'm running as a proud Democrat. For the Senate. And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of I got hairy legs that turn that 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 that, that turn uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down. So it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Barack and I think it's a right for people that have bad health care. We have to do at least several things. One, we have to uh, depend on what the president's going to do right now. And first of all, he has to uh, tell, uh, uh, wait till the cases before anything happens. Look, exacerbating the need for environmental, for environmental justice. Sorry, as a bug. <laughs> Folks, we got a lot of work to do. I don't really need you to get me elected. It's a case where we cannot let this, we've never allowed any crisis from the Civil War straight through to the pandemic of 17, all the way around 16. We have never, never let our democracy take second fiddle. We, they, we can both have a democracy and elections and at the same time correct the public health. Everywhere I've been hearing all around the country, you're trying your best, but it never feels like enough. It's and here comes the train that he tried to make sure didn't continue to up front. No, that's the commuter. All right. No, that's what. But folks, look. Anyway, I am uh, I am very willing to let the American public judge my physical, and mental, fil my physical as well as my mental fil fitness. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize. True Thank you very much. Look, you can't let this happen to our country, okay? We know what's going on. You can't let this. This was a total fluke. This was a total fluke. In prime time, you didn't work, and now it's really not working. What a disaster. I can't believe this is even happening. It puts much more pressure on me running against a guy like this, you know? You know, if you lost to somebody that was good, can you imagine if, if, if the concept of losing to this guy? Oh, you better, you better get out there and vote tomorrow. I will be so angry. I'll never come back to Michigan. I'll never come back. I'll tell Japan to bring all those plants the hell back. Joining us tonight are some great warriors, great people. Congressman Bill Heisinger. Bill, where is Bill? 
Thank you very much. Everything good? Uh, you're doing great. Thank you, Bill. Congressional candidate Peter Meyer. Peter, where's Peter? Peter, where's Peter? Peter, you don't have a good location. What happened to Peter? Peter's here someplace, and I hear he's doing great. House Speaker Lee Chatfield. Lee. Thank you, Lee. Great job you're doing. RNC chair, she got me. I'll tell you what a job she did. What a job she did. Rana McDaniel. Where are you, Rana? What a job she's done. She, uh, you know, we won, we won this great, we won this great state with her leadership. Thank you, Rana, very much. Great job. State GOP chair, Laura Cox. Laura. Good job. Are we going to win? Okay, okay. Otherwise, we will fire you so fast. No, we're going to — I think we're going to have a tremendous victory in Michigan. I think we're going to have a tremendous victory in all of these states they're talking about. I see all of them, maybe. We're going to have a tremendous evening. I, I hope so. For the good of our country, I hope so. You see the alternative. I'm sorry. But this is not just an alternative. We're doing a great job, but we want to keep it going, okay? We got to keep it going, and we're going to. A very special person, Medal of Honor recipient, Jim McLaughlin. Jim, where are you? Great job. He's a very brave one. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations. That's a great honor, our highest honor. Ted Nugent, and he is — he is great. Where's Ted? Great job, Ted. He's been from day one, right, Ted? Great job. Thank you very much for everything. We appreciate it. I love — I love your sound. I love your music. And speaking of sound, music, and other things, one of the big superstars of the world, Little Pimp. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> How is it going? Do you want to come up and say something? Do you want to? Come on. Little Pump, come on. Come on up here. Come on up here. Does everyone know who he is? Uh, do you know how big he is? Come on up here. <laughs> it's a nice hat. Come on, say something. Hello, everybody. How y'all? How you guys feeling? I come here to say, Mr. President, I appreciate everything you've done for our country. You brought the troops home, and you're doing the right thing. MAGA 202020. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And do not vote for Sleepy Joe at all. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's very nice. Big star. Big star. <laughs> That's very impressive. For 47 years, Joe Biden viciously attacked black Americans. He called young black men super predators. To every black American, I am asking you to get out tomorrow and vote. This is your one and only chance. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you very much to show Joe Biden what you think of his decision to attack you, to jail you, to betray you. And I'm fighting for you. And you know what we've done? What we've done is uh, really something that nobody thought could have happened. Other administrations, in particular the last administration, didn't make even a move to try and get it done. We got criminal justice reform done. We got prison reform done. We got opportunity zones. All done and complete. Tim Scott. We had funding for historically black colleges and universities completed and done. And it's an honor to have done it. And I say it all the time. 
With the exception of Abraham Lincoln, no president has done as much for the black community as President Trump. And I'm very proud of it. Very proud of it. Thank you. Thank you. And it's been an honor. It's been an honor. Biden has vowed to increase refugee admissions from terrorist nations by over 700 percent, including from Syria, Somalia, and Yemen. The Biden plan would overwhelm your communities and turn Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the entire Midwest into a virtual refugee camp. I am keeping radical Islamic terrorists, if you don't mind, the hell out of our country, okay? And if you take a look at France over the last week, they're having a devastating problem. Another problem happened today, a very big problem in Europe, and we don't want it. We don't want that problem. We don't need it. We don't want it. We invested $2.5 trillion in the United States military, biggest investment we've ever made. We are the envy of every country militarily, Russia, China, North Korea. Everybody looks at what we have. Nobody. Tanks, F-35s, the super fighter jets, tankers, submarines, missiles, rockets, hypersonic missiles. They go seven times faster than our fastest missile, fastest in the world. All of the things we've done in our nuclear plants and our nuclear capability is now at the highest level, and it's all in tippy-top shape. And you just have to pray to God that we never use it. That's all we say. Pray to God that we never use it. So we have the best, the best in the world, all, by the way, made in the USA and made — a lot of it made right here in Michigan. A lot of it made right here in Michigan. We also passed VA Veterans Choice and Veterans Accountability, VA Accountability. We got 91 percent. We killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. We eliminated the world's top terrorist. Soleimani is dead. I recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. I've been working on that for 52 years. And instead of endless wars, we are now forging peace in the Middle East, and we're getting it done. It's going to happen very quickly. You watch. A vote for me and the Republican Party is a vote for the American dream. And remember, Abraham Lincoln was a proud member of the Republican Party. Abraham Lincoln. In conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world. And we will end our reliance on China once and for all, which is already taking place. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. With God's help, we will defend the right to life, religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms, your Second Amendment which is under siege, but it's 100 percent secure with us in this position, Mike, right? We will never touch it. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency, which goes into effect on January 1st, bigger than health care, lower drug prices even more, we have signed and done something that's never been done on prescription drug prices. Favored nations, it will bring drug prices down 50, 60, 70 percent, like you've never seen before. And the drug companies, Big Pharma, does not exactly like your favorite president, I will tell you, but that's okay. We broke a logjam. Favored nations, nobody thought we'd ever do that. We did. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. That's starting very soon. 
We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Michigan. Tomorrow, you have the power with the power of your vote, right? The power of your vote. But you have a power to save America, for this country will never be a socialist nation. We would never allow that to happen. Together, we can finish the job and drain the Washington swamp once and for all. Nobody knew it was so deep and so vicious, but we have done some job. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your coworkers, and get out and vote. Most important election, perhaps, in the history of our country. I never thought I'd say that. After what we went through four years ago, I said, there'll never be anything like that never be anything like what we went through. And uh, this is the most important election, maybe, in the history of our country. From Midland to Mackinac, from Pontiac to Battle Creek, and from Detroit to right here in Grand Rapids. I love Grand Rapids. We inherit the legacy of American patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears to defend our country, our families, and our freedom. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the ocean, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world. And the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Proud citizens like you who helped build this country, together we will take back our country. We are taking it back at a level that nobody has believed. We are taking it back, and we are winning, and we're going to win tomorrow. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Michigan, we have made America powerful again. Our military, it's never been like this. We have made America wealthy again. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again, and we will make America great again. Thank you, Michigan. Go out and vote. Thank you very much. Thank you.